Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best View Plays of the Week. This week we have a Super Pershing making its last stand, a sniper toasting enemies on the grill, and a fearless IS-3. Let's start the show. For a change, let's start with a sniper. Sprasitel from the Czech Republic, who plays on the European servers, uses the finest gear for sniping on Ir Haluf. The Grille Fumpsane is an exceptional tool for a sniper. The enormous 15cm howitzer is amazingly accurate, and it packs some serious punch. The vehicle is built on a Panther's chassis, so it covers the ground quickly. On the other hand, it turns slowly and is extremely flimsy. An Object 140 comes into view, and the sniper tags it on the run. After a quick sprint into a new position, an IS-3 is the next to receive some attention. An enemy force is engaged in the north, so our sniper hurries over to lend a hand. This has to be timed just right so they can't return fire. A Diga 2 gets tagged, and then a second time. It falls back with a sliver of health, and the sniper shifts onto bigger prey. Sprasito peeks out for another shot, but this time they are ready and waiting. Well, that wasn't very nice. Our sniper repairs their gun and tests it on an IS-3A. Still good. Allies have mostly won the engagement, and all that remains of that force is the Object 140 that we saw at the start. Nope, you're not getting away. A quick shot at an E5 actually fails to penetrate. The foe escapes into cover. To be a good sniper, you need to have a good memory, and this is no exception. As a single shell takes out a hiding bulldog. <laughs> Too easy. The second attempt at the American Heavy is a solid hit. Splacito dodges its fire, but fails to land the finishing shot. Allies can shave off those last hit points, as a more valuable target has caught the sniper's eye. The first hit deals massive damage and takes out a trap. Is there time for another one? Not quite. A black dog is spotted for a moment, and that's enough for the sniper. Boom! Like a bolt from the blue! There's a top tier med tank sneaking around near the capture circle, but not for long. Noticing that a friendly Super Pershing is locked in battle with the CDC, Splacito drives behind the bandit and pulls the trigger. Flames shoot out of the engine deck, and the enemy burns to death just before the ramp hits. Three more to go. The sniper directs an ally to check the northern passage, and a Ferdinand is revealed. Unfortunately, a T-54 Mod 1 shows up as well, and the ally dies before Splacito can join the fight. The T-54 charges. It takes a hit coming in, but the sniper is in deadly peril. Splacito uses Akido, the energy of the ram, helping to turn the TD around. Boom! The gun took some damage again, and this time the sniper will just have to live with it. The 30 rolls over the hill, fires, and hits a trap. Splacito thanks the lucky stars and removes the enemy TD from the match. Eight down with one more to go. The Super Pershing does its best as a very slow scout. But the first sign of an enemy is Spacito's sixth sense going off. Our sniper is trapped here. The object should be to the east. But eventually, the ally arrives and lights it up. They retreat for now. But will they take the bait? Yes, they do. The 704 reappears and takes out the Pershing. The target is small and the angle is bad. But this is a sniper's game after all. Victory arrives with nine kills. Excellent shooting and good tactics from Splacitel from the Czech Republic. Just a single missed shot and one bounce out of 20. And that's in a game with several unhide kills. Staying on the EU server, our invader is the Mantis 123 Lithuania. The vehicle is the Bacchetta Leon 25 ton AP and the match plays out on Tundra. The Mantis gets off to a strong start, providing fire support in the east. Reloading the gun takes over 40 seconds. But a Centurion doesn't feel like waiting. Luckily, it's impatient and hesitant, so getting just a single free hit. The reload is ready, and the Mantis rolls out to teach the Centurion some manners. The bat's fire rate isn't great though, but he gets the job done. The first round of the next clip finishes off an IS-6. The Mantis follows up with an attack run that results in two more kills. Is it time for a reload? Or would there be a good target for the last shell? This one will do. That makes Top Gun. Another long reload, whilst the capture siren goes off. 
Da Mantis blows up a Diga, and then an IS-3. There are no good targets to be had from here, so the Invader hits reload and drives closer. The Kappa should be here, but so is an ISU, which has to be dealt with first. The slow autoloader causes problems once again, as the TD gets a shot off. The Kappa has moved on, so Demantis loads the remaining shells and moves to an ambush position. Just four shots, better make them count. That's one. There's the Kappa, but are three shells enough? One, two, three. No, they weren't. Now what? It would be pointless to ram a Kjönnigstiger, so the baby rat runs away. A little later, the Kappa leaves the circle. It takes a while for Demantis to notice the opportunity and head for the capture circle. Now, it's just a matter of not getting killed. If the Tiger catches the invader by surprise, it will be over with a single shot. There it is! Demantis hurries into cover, and the Tiger's shell hits the ground. Now all it's needed is staying on the other side of the rock. A sluggish Tiger Zwei can't win this, and Demantis wins with a capture. This trick seems to be getting popular. The capture puts Demantis into the invader category, but mostly it was just a good game with a tank that's still fairly new to the game. This week's Defender plays on the Asian server and goes by the name PKPKPK232. It's one of those that just rolls off the tongue. PK's vehicle is the T26E4, better known as the Super Pershing. And the Tier 9 match is played on Arctic Circle. This tank is a tough cookie, and PK doesn't hesitate to take point at the Southern Choke. The battle goes on for a long time. Cue the cinematics! In the end, the Defender and team clear the area, but with heavy casualties. PK swings the tank around and heads back to guard the base. The lower part of the map is now wide open. The first challenger is a T-54 Scout, which charges at the artillery. It lives long enough to land two hits and to reveal the positions of the SPGs. A low-tier British Heavy takes a peek, but decides against attacking. The last Allied tank winks out of the map, leaving PK with just the SPGs for company. At least they seem pretty effective. A tree falls. Someone is coming. It's an AT-15, and the British Heavy appears on the other side of the hill as well. The SPGs die in moments, with the Lorraine managing one last shot before his demise. BK uses the tank destroyer as a shield against the FB-201. It needs to die quickly. Okay, and now the Heavy. The Pershing is badly damaged by the time PK gets the space armor into play, but after that, the opponent seems almost helpless. A Batchat SVG comes into view and charges straight at the Defender. PK makes use of what cover there is and keeps firing on the FB. It's dead, and the RT misses from almost point blank range. The Bat gets disposed of with a pair of HE shells, but the next opponent arrives before the reload is done. It's a T28 on its last legs. A single HPCR shell is enough to take care of it. Just two more now. The remaining arty gets caught in the open. As PK starts putting it down, the IS comes into view as well. The Soviet heavy fires shell after shell, but the space armor holds. PK has more success and begins taking the enemy apart. The IS falls back, but keeps firing. The defender follows, switching to APCR for the finishing shots. It's over. And there we have it. A defender with just 18 defense points. The crucial moment was dealing with the AT-15 and FB-201 at the same time. And PK pulled it off nicely. Well played! <laughs> Moving on, our crucial contributor is Yanuts20011 from the EU region, who drives a T-32 on Malinov. The match is a tier 9 game with three heavy bruises to worry about. A black dog comes in on a scouting run, and Yanut starts drawing fire right away. 
That's the repair kit gone, and the match has barely started. A Comet joins the M41, and Yanuts heads over to deal with both of them. A moment's wait to disappear from sight, and then it's time to attack. The Comet is caught by surprise, and both opponents struggle to hurt the T-32's turret. The first kill is actually an M103, which tries to support the daring scouts. The Comet keeps fighting, but its fate is sealed as soon as Yanuts is free to focus on it. The Black Dog is more dangerous, and is supported by a Tiga 2. The fight goes on for a while until an allied dog takes out the Tiga, and Yanuts can kill the scout undisturbed. The T-32 peeks out and engages a Black Prince through a window. When it doesn't work, Yanuts pushes to the enemy's side of the map, dropping down for a quick swim at the end. Ah, that was refreshing. Yanuts takes a moment to send a shell towards an FCM, before heading deep into enemy territory. Let's try this again, Your Majesty. The Prince bounces several shots, but the moment it angles its hole badly, it's done for. It looks like the FCM didn't appreciate being sucker punched. The attempt at revenge doesn't go so well, however. The dead prince would make for a nice bunker, but there's nobody here. Forwards! The challenger is ready. But it dies without causing much trouble. That's Top Gun. There's still incoming fire from this direction. It turns out to be an E-75, so Yanuts does the reasonable thing in seeking cover and screaming for help. A T-10 is spotted, and then a T-49. Yanuts tags the scout on the run, and an ally takes it out of the game. A friendly TD picks off the T-10, and Yanuts goes on the attack. The enemies are down to just two, but they are both dangerous machines. Yanuts tracks the E-75 and drives around the building. The Scorpion dashes out. It keeps going for a while before Yanuts brings it down on the third attempt. The E-75 is coming, and the T-32 doesn't quite manage to get away. The smaller heavy should be badly outclassed, but Yanuts takes the E-75 to school. A few shots later, it's all over. A nice aggressive push with eight kills from the middle tier. The start looked pretty bad, but Yanuts 20011 turned things around and carried the team to victory. The episode finale is a steel wall game on Swamp. The coach CBG drives an IS-3 and plays on the European surface. The coach drives a tough tank, but the view from bottom tier may be a little intimidating. That might be why it takes a moment for the IS-3 to wake up and get going. Ikot arrives on the scene as a bad chat is fighting three opponents. The autoloader falls in battle, and the steel wall wades in to avenge it. Beating the stuffing out of the rival IS-3s is a good start. Ikot is far from done, however, and follows up by taking down an ST-1 as well. Onwards! Rather than hiding behind higher tiered allies, the steel wall charges right at the next target. There's a moment of hesitation when Sixth Sense is triggered, but Ikot pushes on and lands a magnificent shot on the move. High caliber shells rip into the IS 3, but the steel wall will not be stopped. Safe for a moment, and with a chance to pick off a scout. The fearless steel wall climbs up the slope and trays fire with a tier 10 pattern. The type 4 catches up and pushes past. The steel wall bounces a shell from a top tier heavy and falls back as the type 4 gets torn to shreds. Rather than escape, the steel wall keeps fighting. An APCR shell manages to hurt the pattern, and its return shot bounces. That was close. The coat braves the IS-4's fury again and manages to deal it some damage. The game is three against three. The team's Bosich misses its shot and blows up. It looks like the Steel Wall will have to handle this. Shots are traded, and Ekot lives through it. The incredulous IS-4 presses the attack and bounces again. 
It's now or never. The IS-3 rolls out, Ikote aims for the lower plate, and boom! The biggest threat is gone. But unfortunately, so are the Allies. The Steel Wall will have to see this through. The pattern comes into view, and is gone in an instant. That still leaves a Tier 9 Waffenträger. Ikote descends from the hill and goes on the hunt. The one who gets the drop on the other is going to win the game. There, and it's looking the wrong way. The TD tries to spin it around, but it's too late! Victory! We've seen bigger amounts of block damage on the show, of course, but surviving those encounters in an IS-3 was awesome. The fearless attitude was also a pleasure to see as well. And that's it for this week! That first replay was a big one. Snipers are rare these days since we removed RNG-like scenes from best replays of the week. Still a good match, though. I'm Luke Neller, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.